Mechatronics Concept Designer in NX is a toolset that includes physics-based simulation capabilities. It is most commonly used to quickly create and validate mechatronics concepts early in a development process. In this tutorial, we'll utilize this toolset in order to simulate a roller chain with two sprockets. In the example, I have already modeled the roller chain, so I will simply show you how you can use it to create the animation. As the roller chain consists of a relatively large quantity of links, the process of setting up the simulation can feel a bit tedious. However, although some small parts of this tutorial is left out or sped up, it only took me roughly 20 minutes to get it properly set up. There are three major steps we'll cover during this process. First, we need to add rigid bodies. This is simply the geometry which will actively take part of the simulation, and which will be affected by simulated gravity. Secondly, we must define the various joints between the rigid bodies, like hinge joints between the chain links. Finally, we need to define the collision bodies to simulate how the geometry behaves in relation to each other if they touch. We'll start off by defining the rigid bodies. I've defined an inner and outer link for the chain in the assembly structure, where each part will be defined as a rigid body. Unfortunately, I cannot select everyone at the same time, as this would mean that all of the links would behave as one rigid body, so I'll unpack the links in my part navigator and click apply for each of them. You can click the middle mouse button to apply it for each part. You won't be able to pick the same part twice, so don't worry about duplicates at this stage. I'll also define a large and a small sprocket as rigid bodies. Secondly, we must define the hinge joints. This is the part where it may be easy to get lost, as each of the links must have a base and a rotation point. What I do is that I start off with the link as an attachment, and select the next link as the base. I then define the middle pin between these two links as the rotation point. I proceed by working my way around the chain. It may help to keep track on where we are on the chain if you add separate color to the inner and outer link. We also need to add a rotation point to the two sprockets, and this is where the help geometry, the two cylinders, will play its part. Do not define the help geometry as bases, as that will automatically define them as rigid bodies. This will then make them fall out of the simulation. Finally, we can start adding collision bodies. First and foremost, we'll add it to the two sprockets. You may have a default setting on cube in this drop-down menu, so be sure to set it to mesh in order to recreate the original geometry. We also define collision bodies on the bushes, 
and we'll use cylinder type on this since they are in fact cylinders. Now that everything is set up, you can click play and see how it plays out. We have no motors defined here right now, but you are able to interact with the simulation and drag the geometry. If you wonder why the sprockets are highlighted like this, it's simply due to a setting within the collision body. This can be deactivated by double clicking the collision body and unchecking highlight on collision. To define motors to the simulation, simply click stop and proceed by clicking speed control. This will display all of the hinge joints we defined and you can click on a desired vector to add a motor to it. Now the reason why I have added a third cylinder to the simulation is that I want to use it as a chain tensioner. To achieve this, the only thing I do is defining it as a collision body, which will then add a tension to our roller chain when the simulation is played. If you experience hiccups in your animation, like you see here, this may be related to your collision accuracy. If you open File, Preferences and Mechatronics Concept Designer, you can insert a more accurate collision simulation by lowering the value on the precision in this dialog.